there is no clear definition of what 5G is. Uh, and in the past, where um, we've attempted to define a, a generation, um, it hasn't always been successful. So I think it's really the, the industry and the marketplace at large that will determine when performance is at such a level that it, it qualifies to, be, to become the next generation. The ITU is leading the process of adoption of standards for the radio interface of um, mobile networks. We did that for 3G in 2000, for 4G in 2007, and we have started to do that recently for 5G under the ITU name of IMT 2020. 5G is going to entail new air interfaces and radio access over newly assigned spectrum but it will also support the evolution of current technology. We see Etsy's role as uh, developing some of the building blocks upon which 5G will be based. Um, some of those are already very well known, for example, network functions virtualization and an Etsy activity that's been uh, running for quite some time now, but more recently activities on mobile edge computing and uh, looking at um, millimetric wave transmission, for example. 5G is uh, not just another new radio access technologies for us, it's a new fabric which can help to bring our vision to life, uh, which is to expand the human possibilities for the connected world. That means 5G should also be a system of systems which can be applied to other and adjacent markets. In the future, the requirements for different industries and different verticals will be diverse. And in, in this sense, we will look for a range of different capabilities. So it isn't clear that 5G will be one radio access system. It may be multiple ones. Uh, we will not be able to create one unifying technology. We may need to be able to create a unifying platform in which to pull together these different technologies to offer services to customers. One of the neat things about what's coming around the corner, both with NFV, which is required for 5G, and all the 5G technologies, and millimeter wave, and all that kind of stuff that are coming, is that while we know if we build a big, huge, fat, uh, um, you know, configurable pipe and make it where people can take advantage of it, how it gets used is anyone's guess. We view 5G as, as really an end-to-end -end ecosystem that's going to provide many different customer benefits. It's not only the enhanced mobile broadband where we'll get very high gigabit speeds, but it's also the ability to deliver the IoT ecosystem where we're going to have literally billions of devices. In addition to that, there are low latency, high reliability functions that are required. So it's almost a three-legged stool that we'll build with 5G, and the use cases around each of those will really develop as the technology matures. With the Internet of Things coming up, um, there will be a situation where you don't need very high capacity. You just need very inexpensive devices which can transmit a few bit per second, maybe only once a year, but this may be of critical importance. And you want these devices to be very cheap. So it means that the 5G specification will have to be somewhat expandable. There are certain frequencies, additional frequencies, for providing greater bandwidth, providing uh, additional capacity. Um, Right now, we've, we've started an effort in RAN to uh, approach channel modeling, which will allow us to understand better what the, what the restrictions and capabilities of these new frequency ranges entail. We don't identify or allocate spectrum in the ITU just for 5G. We say this is for IMT, International Mobile Telecommunications. And then, of course, depending on the time when it will be available in each country, this depends on national authorities and the local situation. Depending on that time, you may use it for 4G, if it's ready now, or for 5G. Well, there's a limited amount of spectrum available to us, right? So it's like real estate. Once it's used for something, it can't be used for something else. And so making sure that the right decisions get made on the spectrum to ensure that 5G can be utilized and can be benefit all of the users uh, is very, very important. And then once you come to a decision on how you're going to use the spectrum, what channels you're going to make it take advantage of, then the manufacturers can build the radios and the antennas, and, and that can be leveraged across all the different carriers. And hopefully it aligns with the global standards and the global spectrum, so you only have to manufacture one set of uh, components for all the different networks that you need to build for.
You know, just when we think we've got a good grasp of 5G, there is a potential spoiler ahead. There may well be an alternative name on the cards. We are loath to use the word 5G because there are many, many companies, many uh, agencies that have their own interpretation of what that term means. So in the past, we've, we've typically named radio access technologies, but we don't know what the radio access technologies will be, whether there'll be one or many. So at this point, uh, the, the, there are many different projects. Some of them are called 5G, some are called Next Generation, some of them are called Smarter. We have many different acronyms and, and titles, but we're all working towards uh, the objective of, of a submission to IMT 2020 to meet roughly speaking, the objectives set out by ITU.